Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. So CMU 1.15.4 has just been released. In this video, we're going to go over absolutely everything that has changed in this new version and discuss some things that I believe are going to be coming to CMU emulator very, very soon. Since this brand new version was released for CMU patrons on the 30th of March, this of course means that CMU 1.15.4 is going to be released to everyone else for free on the 6th of April, so exactly seven days later later as per usual. Now, unfortunately, if you were expecting the Vulkan API to be released in this new CMU version, I unfortunately have some bad news for you. As we had speculated before, this is mainly going to be a bug fixing release, and to be honest, with a title like 1.15.4 instead of 1.16.0, I don't think there's anything else anyone really expected. Now that all that's out of the way, let's take a look at everything that is included in this brand new 1.15.4 version. First of all, they have given us an update that means that the gamepad view is now going to work within the OS screen API. This is mainly a fix for some homebrew applications so if you yourself are a homebrew developer this is going to be some very very cool news for you. Next up, they have implemented PSQL Type 9, which is a recompiler instruction that is hopefully going to boost performance in many games. One such game that was given as an example was Hyrule Warriors, especially so when played in its co-op multiplayer mode. They have fixed a bug in texture copy operations in relation to non-zero MIP levels. This bug itself affected the game you're watching right now, Splatoon. Thankfully, with this bug fixed, the shadows in the main lobby area are now no longer completely broken. Next up, they have added support for two brand new texture formats. With this new implementation, any crashing that you may have experienced when playing through Resident Evil Revelations should now be solved. And finally, for this graphical fixes section, they have also listed minor optimizations, though to be honest, in all of my testing so far on 1.15.4, I haven't seen too much of a performance increase, except for, obviously, in the games which I have just finished discussing. Next up, and in relation to gamepad input, they have added support for the hot plugging of any configured controllers while any of your games are running. This obviously means that if your controller gets somehow disconnected while you're playing any of your games, when you reconnect it, it is simply going to allow you to resume playing like you previously were. Next up, they have made it so that spot pass files are now cached across CMUSE sessions, meaning that they will only be re-downloaded in the event that any of these spot pass files are outdated in future. To be honest, this this really only affects people who use CMU emulator in its online mode, so if you don't play any online games on CMU like I'm doing in Splatoon right now, this new update isn't really going to apply to you at all. Regardless, for those of you that it does apply to, it's still going to be a very, very nice and handy quality of life change, especially so for any of you avid Super Smash Bros players. Okay, so on to the last and what I would have to say is the most major update in this new CMU version, they have added full support for H.264 video playback natively inside of CMU emulator itself. These H.264 videos are mainly seen in games like Mario Party 10, but the biggest game and by far the most popular game on CMU emulator, Breath of the Wild, also requires full support for H.264 video playback. Previously, in older CMU versions, we were able to see these videos in The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild due to a plugin that I would imagine most of you are aware of, CMU Hook. So, why you you may ask, do I think that this is a major part of this update? This now means that The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is fully playable the entire way through just using CMU emulator itself with absolutely no outside interference or outside plugins needed at all. An absolutely enormous step for the emulator. The addition of H.264 video playback has been something that CMUSE users, especially so over on the official Discord, have been asking for for a long, long time. And also, thanks to this, CMU is one step closer to losing its reliance on the utilization of CMU Hook at all. Now, CMU Hook is still going to be required in the event that you want to use graphics packs like Clarity in order to boost the visuals of your game, or indeed if you want to use the FPS++ graphics pack, uh, graphics
Rabbids Pack, lots of you are likely going to be familiar with. It allows you to play this game back at 60 frames per second or higher. Now, obviously, a lot of you guys out there want to attain 60 frames per second, but watching the gameplay right now, which is me playing Breath of the Wild at 8K resolution and a locked 30 FPS without the utilization or the installation of Simu Hook, it's still a pretty damn cool achievement for a Simu emulator as a whole. If you yourself want to read over the entire changelog for 1.15.4, I will have it linked down in the description of this video in a text format. For now, I'm going to leave you with some gameplay of The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild running natively on Simu emulator in its stock configuration, just to show you guys how well it now runs even without Simu Hook installed. Obviously, some of you are going to prefer 60 frames per second, but it's still pretty damn impressive to be able to run a game that looks and plays as well as this one at 8k 30 frames per second. If you have any questions in relation to this new Simu version, or if you just want to ask about your own favourite game's compatibility, do not be afraid to leave a comment down below. Once again guys, cheers for checking out the video, remember to like it if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and as always, subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.
Thank <laughs> you. 